Hi, welcome back to Shotoku Tech. Yeah, I've got this laser engraver. It comes really handy for model rocketry, cutting cardboard and balsa wood and even light plywood parts for rockets, centering rings, fins, etc. Unfortunately, yeah, I was running it off of this Asus stick PC my son gave me and it ran for about four or five years, but it finally gave up the ghost. So I had to replace the Asus stick PC with this two-in-one tablet. Got the software loaded up, fired up the laser, I was happy, and then the laser module burnt out on me. Now you see this laser module has that long beam and it's very high up from the material. It's because you can actually adjust the focus of the laser. And I think these units aren't as easy to find as they used to be. So I had to replace the laser unit. So I saw this 40 watt laser module, my previous one was a 30 watt, 40 watt laser module for a good price. So I went ahead and got it, but then I realized, oh, this is a fixed focus laser module. And I really didn't know what that meant. But what it means is you adjust the focus of the laser by raising and lowering the laser module itself. And it has to be very close to the material here for engraving. It has to be five millimeters from the material and then to cut through bass plywood they're talking about anywhere from three millimeters to four millimeters in height from the material that you're working with so i had to come up with some kind of bracket that i could use to raise and lower this fixed focus laser module and i whipped this out in tinkercad real quick but then i had to fix my 3d printer as well i'd let it sit for a couple of months and the filament actually was just crumbling and I couldn't extract it from the Bowden tube. Fortunately, I was able to release the Bowden tube, heat up the hot end, and pull the remaining filament out of the Bowden tube, and we were back in business. I tweeted about it over the Thanksgiving holiday. It's good to have an extra couple days to get caught up on these things that I'm not able to do in a normal routine week. So there you see I'm printing out that bracket. And I also came up with this shim here that's three, four, and five millimeters in height so that we can adjust the focus of our fixed focus laser. Here's the laser module itself. I like how the warning label, you have to turn it the right side up so that you're actually pointing the laser towards your face. I thought that was kind of funny. But uh, yeah, it's not plugged in, so it's not going to hurt anybody right now. Let's go ahead and attach this bracket here. We'll speed things up a little bit. I'm just going to sink these four screws into it. There we go. Now we're going to cinch those screws down tight. And you can see here how we're going to be able to raise and lower this laser module using that bracket that I just printed. So here's the shim. We're going to put that into action here. I'm just going to go ahead and set this for three millimeters. So we'll put the three millimeter shim in there. And then up here at the top of the assembly, there's four set screws that hold they used to hold that laser module, now they hold the laser module bracket. When you're using this tool, always wear the green safety glasses to protect your eyes. You don't want to look at the light directly. Let's check out some of the software here. This is Elex Maker. Uh, I think they're out of business. I had a hard time finding this software once I had to reload. You got to select the correct serial port. Then you select the machine type. This upper left one, the switch to Elex laser mode, that's the correct mode. Now we're going to use Pick Carve. This lets us take a SVG, a scalable vector graphics image. It's a 2D image that's stored in XML. And that actually loads into the software here. Now let's go ahead and hit start. Wow. It's, it's that 40 watt laser unit that close up. It's cutting it on the first pass. Normally with the old laser, I'd have to make two, three passes with the 30 watt laser 
in here this 40 watt fixed focus laser is just cutting it right away in one pass. I'm a little worried about the cardboard warping up like that. It might catch itself on the housing there. Let's see, that settled in nice enough. Let's cut our other centering ring here. I'm speeding this up a little bit. I think it took about two minutes to do this. But this is a lot more accurate than using X-Acto blades, let me tell you. <laughs> I used to do this by hand for my cardboard rockets. Okay, the first one's finished. I'm kind of excited I'm going to reach in and grab it. Yeah, look at that. One pass, it's done. Nice, clean cut. I'm pretty excited about this. We're back in business. I've Some of my rocketry projects have fallen off because this has been sitting idle for about six months. Yeah, there you go. These pieces are identical. Looks good. Okay, so give this video a like. Leave a comment down below on what you think of laser engravers and 3D printers. And before you go watch more of my videos here, please click on subscribe. Thank you very much.